And they gave me a million bucks to keep my trap shut, and I did, for 15 years. But last night I was making the rounds, and I saw the professor. I had a heart attack three years back, and I tell you, when I saw him standing there in front of room 204, I felt another one coming on. He turned and smiled, and it was like he hadn't aged a day in 15 years. Hey there, chief, he said, and that was it. I dropped my clipboard on the ground and hightailed it out of there, never looking back. Now, what I'm about to tell you is liable to make me sound crazier than a three-horned goat, but I promise you, there's crazier things out there. The cops don't believe me. The official story is that the professor and those students died 15 years ago. Room 204 just up and exploded, they said. Damnedest thing. And there's some truth there. That room did explode, but it wasn't an accident. We knew exactly what we were doing. Or we thought we did. They call me an assistant supervisor of maintenance, but really I'm a janitor. You might wonder why I'm still a janitor after getting that million bucks. That dough is for Junior, so he doesn't have to go through the same shit I did. The night this happened, I was assigned to the out a bit northwest of the main Harvard campus. Until that night, this was always my favorite beat. I mean, God help you if you wound up at one of the biology labs. Those goddamn dead, cut open animals all over the place used to give me nightmares. And really, thinking back, I'd take those nightmares of mutilated and scattered organs any night over the stuff that has haunted me ever since. There I was, mopping the hallway on the second floor of the lab building when the door to room 204 opened up and this guy popped his head out. Hey, you. I looked around to make sure he was talking to me. Uh, yeah? Uh, can I help you, sir? I thought he was going to bitch about the room being a mess or something. How'd you like to make a thousand bucks, chief? An hour's work at most. Easy money. Does that sound good? It sure did. Things were tight at home, as they always were. A thousand would knock off some of the long overdue bills, but I was also on a tight schedule. They didn't give you much breathing room. Don't want you standing around thinking about it all, I guess. Well, that sounds great, sir, I said. But I gotta stick to my beat. The man laughed. <laughs> We're about to make history, chief. And you're worried about emptying the bathroom trash? Come on. Don't sweat it. You won't get in trouble, I promise. The guy did look like a professor, and big old glasses on his face. I shrugged, leaned my mop against the wall, and said, Sure, what do I have to do? Oh, that's fantastic. Come in, come in. I followed him into the room. One look, and I should have just turned around then and there, and told him to keep this damn money, but I didn't. As soon as I stepped in, I felt the little hairs all over my body stand up. I don't mean I was scared, I mean like there was an electric charge in that room, and I had a guess about where it was coming from. There, in the center of the room, on a round table, was a large glass globe, crackling with electricity, like what you see if you go into a kid's science museum. This one was sort of vibrating around on its stand and buzzing, and the lightning inside was black. I could feel the electricity coming from it, from across the room. There were four kids there, students I guessed, sitting in a row of chairs along one wall. More than sitting, they were strapped into those chairs with metal things over their heads, like those big bull things you see at a hair salon. They all had their eyes closed. Um, what's going on in here? Are those kids okay? They're quite fine, said the professor. As to what's going on, as I said. We're about to make history. We're going to open the first wormhole. A wormhole? Like in the movies? The professor laughed. I suppose, Chief. Now, listen. We had the last minute cancellation, but that's okay because it's an easy job. We're going to be kicking things off here shortly. And once they're properly kicked off, that wormhole will open. I will enter. And if I'm not back in 30 minutes, you are to pull that lever there, and this will close the wormhole. I looked to where he was pointing, at a big red lever attached to a giant whirring machine that was hooked up to the metal bowls over the students' heads. But, um, won't you be trapped on the other side of the wormhole? I asked. Not that I had the slightest idea about what the hell was going on. Well, just so, Chief. We've got this down to two possibilities. The wormhole opens up to what we're calling the second universe. The best way that I can explain this possibility is that, um, 
uh, there's a different reality that exists on the other side of this one. The other side of an invisible wall. The wormhole will provide a door in that wall. And uh, the other possibility? That wormhole will open up to a place that man was not meant to go. 30 minutes will give me enough time to get in and get out, if the first possibility is true. And if it's the second, then you'll close the hole with that lever and my students will destroy my work. This was all above my pre grade. My head was spinning. Why only two possibilities? How the hell did they come up with those two? And if this is real, why the hell would the professor take a coin toss chance of getting stuck in a place that man was not meant to go? I mean, I mean, those were starter questions among the swarm that was buzzing around my head. I see that you have some reservations, said the professor. I assure you that your only job is to pull that lever after 30 minutes. That's it, chief. We'll take care of the rest. And anything that happens isn't on you. The documentation is quite in order. He tapped a folder that was sitting on a circular table. And here, I'll write you a check now before we proceed. As he wrote out the check, I wondered if it would still be valid if he got swallowed up by the wormhole. I actually had that thought, as crazy as it sounds. It was still all so weird and abstract to me at that point. Here, he said, handing over the check. Let's do it, chief. As soon as I enter that hole, give me exactly 30 minutes on the dot. That's all you have to do. I took the chuck, mumbled a thanks, and watched as he walked over to the machine. He pulled the lever, and there was a loud crackling sound, and I watched in unease as one by one the student's eyes shot open. There were no pupils there, like their eyes were rolled back in their sockets. Hey now, I said, taking a step toward the machine. They're quite fine, said the professor. I assure you. Their jaws started to move like they were grinding their teeth. The professor took a jar of neon blue liquid from the shelf on the wall. He unscrewed the lid and poured the stuff on the electric globe on the round table. The thing started going crazy, and then the globe shattered completely. Bits of glass flying through the air as shoots of black lightning zapped out into the room. I ducked down. I'd had enough by then and was ready to get the hell out of there. Then it happened. A fucking black hole appeared in the middle of the room, sucking in the bolts of electricity. It grew larger and larger until it took up half the room. All I could hear was this uh, rushing sound like, like the world's largest vacuum cleaner running at full throttle. Remember, chief, shouted the professor with a wild look on his face. Thirty minutes exactly. And then he stepped into the thing and was gone. At first, my mind was a mess, staring at the whooshing black hole that seemed hungry to suck everything in. I looked at the kids hooked up to the machines. Their eyes rolled back looked like white holes, their jaws grinding away like crazy. It was too much to make sense of. I looked down at my watch. Fifteen minutes and thirty-one seconds had gone by since the professor got swallowed up by the wormhole. My heart was pounding and I kept pacing back and forth, back and forth, trying to work out what the hell was going on. Then I started to zero in on it. Pranked. Not like a prank like we used to do as kids, setting dog shit on somebody's front steps and all that idiocy. I mean a prank like the sophisticated college folk might do, where they tell you something's going on but the whole point is just to observe your reaction. A psychological experiment. There's probably cameras in here watching me right now. Let's see what I'll do. Twelve minutes to go. I saw a trickle of blood come down from one of the kid's nose. I leaned down and looked at him closely. He was shaking a little bit, all over. Well, if I throw that lever, then this would probably stop. Maybe that was the test. I had to decide between trapping the professor in the black hole and saving the kids hooked up to the machines. None of it was real, of course, but, but they didn't know that I knew that. But then, screaming in the back of my mind was that voice. What if it is real? Ten minutes to go. The professor had promised me that the kids were alright. Another one started bleeding from the nose. If it wasn't real, it was a hell of a trick. Where did the professor go if not through that black hole? I thought about touching it, but whenever I came close, I was filled with total terror. It sure seemed real, like it really took you someplace far, far away. I walked over to the table and picked up the folder that was there. Just like the professor had said, the first page was instructions to shut down the machine and destroy it if he did not return within 30 minutes. I flipped that page over, and the next one had a photograph of one of the students. I read what it said. It was a consent form. 
I, Jackson Stewart, acknowledge the possibility of my imminent death if I participate in this experiment. I am prepared to give my life to science. I flipped that page, and there were three more just like it. Now, I'm no lawyer, but there was no way in hell that this experiment was legal, if it was real, even with those consent forms. So, it probably wasn't real. And if it was, then the professor lied to me. He said that the kids were fine. This folder was telling me something else. Two minutes to go. I took a deep breath and paced the room, watching each second tick by. My mind was telling me that none of it was real, but my gut was screaming in horror. I looked at my watch. It would be over soon enough. One way or another. Thirty seconds. I walked over to the machine and put my hand on the lever. God damn it, why is he cutting it so close? I watched the seconds tick by, and I didn't know if I could do it. I didn't know if I could risk trapping the professor wherever the hell he had gone off to. Five seconds. My hand was shaking. Four seconds. Sweat was pouring down my face, dripping into my eyes. Three seconds. One of the students started to moan. The one that I saw was named Jackson in the folder. Two seconds. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. One second. Jackson started to shake. Shit! One look at Jackson and I knew I had to pull it. He was violently jerking around now. Wait, damn it! I snapped my neck around to see the professor's head sticking out of the black hole. Then his shoulders were through. I turned back to Jackson. Blood was pouring out of his eyes. I'm almost through! A second kid started to shake. One more second! I looked to see that the professor was through. He was back in the room. Do it! He shouted. Two things happened after that. I heard a wet popping sound, and I watched as the wormhole disappeared, as though it was never there, but I had never pulled the lever. I slowly turned to look at Jackson. His head was gone. Judging by the bits of brain and splattered blood on the bull thing above his neck, his head had just exploded. The whirring of the machine gradually died down, and then it was silent. The three kids who were still alive stopped shaking, and their eyes closed. A, tra a tragedy said the professor, pointing at Jackson with the exploded head. But not for nothing. I've been there. I've seen it, Chief. I've seen it. I hunched over and puked. It, it was weird, but my first thought was, what a mess I'll have to clean up later. I don't know. I, I guess my mind had sort of shut down, and I was going on autopilot. I was the janitor. I cleaned up the messes. And that was all I knew. Then it hit me. The reality of what happened... You son of a bitch, I yelled. You told me those kids were okay. The professor put this sickening, smug grin on his face. He would have been, chief, had you pulled the lever at the 30-minute mark as instructed. You told me to wait. Did I? Yeah, you fucker. I'm calling the cops. I had a walkie clipped to my belt. It wouldn't get me the police, but it would get me campus security. I reached for it and had it in my hand when I heard a groan behind me. I turned to see it was one of the kids. They were waking up. I went over to unstrap them from the chairs, the first kid's eyes blinking open. And when she saw the professor, she started to scream. It's okay, I said. Shh, shh, it's okay, it's all over. She kept screaming, and then the second kid woke up. He looked right at me with wide, terrified eyes. Get us out of here, he shouted. I'm working on it, kid. I said, fumbling at the straps. They were on tight. The third kid woke up. It's here, she said. It made it through. Everything's okay now, I said. Y your friend your friend didn't make it, I'm afraid, but it's over. The first kid started screaming at the top of her lungs. Get us out of here, shouted the second kid again. The third kid looked me dead in the eyes in a totally calm voice and said, That's not the professor. What? Of course it is, I said. What I saw when I turned to look at the professor will haunt me forever. The professor's mouth was twisting around at odd angles, like something was moving the lower half of his jaw randomly, or like he was trying to get a hair out of his mouth that kept jumping around. The veins in his neck bulged, then sunk back down, then bulged again so that they were thick as ropes. His wrists were rotating in ways they weren't supposed to rotate as his arms flailed around wildly. I had the first kid, the one screaming, free. She jumped out of the chair and ran for the door, but her legs were wobbly. She tripped over herself in the middle of the room. I went to work on the second, whipping my head around every few seconds to look at the professor. It looked like there was something crawling around under his skin, 
something big. Get us out of here! The second kid shouted yet again. The first kid was still on the ground, screaming. I worked away furiously on the straps. If you believe in God, said the third kid, with an eerie calm. Then pray. I took a glance at the professor. And that's when the first bone bust out of his chest and threw a suit. I call it a bone, but it was pure black and dripping with green slime. As for me, said the third kid, I do not believe there is a god. Not after what I have seen. The second kid was free and made a run for it. I scooted over to the third kid, but watched as the professor reached out an arm and grabbed the second kid by the top of his head. The professor gave one quick twist and let go. I heard a terrible snap and the kid slumped to the ground, dead. Three more black bones came out of the professor's chest, dripping. He laughed and bent down to the first kid who was still screaming as the bones began to poke out of his back like a fucking stegosaurus from hell. What is that thing? I asked as I fumbled at the straps of the last kid. It does not belong here, said the kid. No shit, I said, getting one strap free. But what is it? It comes from a terrible place. A place where there is nothing save for pain. Endless pain, incomprehensible to our minds. Great, I muttered, as I noticed with a sinking heart that the screams from the girl behind me had stopped. And then I heard a wet crunch. I couldn't help it. I looked to see the professor tearing into the girl's poor throat with long black fangs, dripping with green slime. I turned back to the kid, almost done with the straps. Just a few more seconds. Uh, what's your name anyway, kid? Claire. Claire, I said my mind trying to stay focused. When you get out of these straps, I want you to pick up this chair and throw it at that thing, okay? I'll do the same thing, okay? And then we make a run for it. Do you understand? C can you do that? I understand, said Claire. I do hope it works. Yeah, I did hope it worked too. We have to make it work, Claire, I said, yanking off the last strap. Come on. We stood up together and reached over to pick up a chair. I hurled it at the professor with all my strength, and it shattered against his boned back. I heard a terrible screech, and then I watched as Claire's chair followed behind. I grabbed Claire's arm with one hand and reached for my pocket knife with the other. The only way out of the room meant passing by the professor. We started running as I pulled out the knife and flicked it open. The professor stood, still screeching, as the green slime mixed with the red blood from the kid's throat and dripped down his chin. I took a wild stab at the professor's neck. It connected. I kept running with Claire, leaving the knife stuck in the professor's neck, and made it to the door. I had my hand around the knob when I felt Claire pull away from me. I looked back, helpless, as I saw the professor reach long black claws into her gut. I threw the door open and left her there. Oh God, I left her there. I made it outside of the lab building somehow. I don't remember how. My mind just sort of shut down as I ran like hell, I guess. I did have the presence to go around and lock all of the doors from the outside, and then I got on the radio to campus security. You guys need to get the police over to the astrophysics center fucking ASAP. There was a fucking massacre in there. The front door started to rattle and I heard a god awful shriek again. Repeat, said a voice over the walkie. Look, I said, call up Lawrence Summers right now. And that was the president of Harvard at the time, and I had seen his signature on papers in that folder with all the consent forms. Tell him that the wormhole experiment has gone way fucking south. The rattling at the door stopped. I only prayed that thing didn't figure out it could just break a window and crawl out that way. This is the janitor, right? Said a different voice on the other end of the walkie. Is this a joke? The wormhole experiment? Have you been drinking? Call Lawrence Summers. It, if you don't, I promise you that you'll never be able to live with yourself. Now, do it now. And there was a horrible pause. I heard the professor trying the side door now, shrieking once again. 10-4. A fleet of black SUVs pulled up two minutes later. A team of heavily armed men jumped out and ran past me, breaking through the windows and jumping inside. I heard a stream of gunfire and screams, so many screams, and the professor's horrible shrieks. After a while, it was quiet, and a second team of men jumped through the broken windows. I didn't hear any more gunfire. I felt a hand on my shoulder and whipped around. A man was standing there. I don't remember a single thing about what he looked like, but I remember our conversation. Tell me what happened, he said. And I told him the full story, the same one that I've told you. We were prepared to give you a lot of money to sign an NDA. A NDA? Non-disclosure agreement, 
It means that you can never tell anybody about what happened here tonight. Um, how much? A million dollars. Um, and a promotion. The man paused. You mean you still want to work? Work here? After tonight? Somebody's gotta clean up the shit. I said. F fine, of course. And one more thing. And what's that? Asked the man. I just want to know that this will never happen again. I, I want you to blow all that shit up and burn all the notes. Of course. And I want to watch. Of course. Said the man. And so I thought it was over. But it's not. Last night I saw the professor again. He looked me right in the eyes. Flashed that smug grin and said, Hey there, chief. And that's when I ran the hell out of there. The police don't believe me. I sent a dozen emails to Lawrence Summers' assistants. I've called every number I've found listed for him. I haven't heard anything back. I don't know who else to turn to. I'm afraid the professor's going to open the wormhole again. I'm afraid this time he might bring his friends back with him. <laughs>